Congressman Ron Paul has been called Dr. No because he repeatedly votes against legislation that he believes gives government too much power. If it's not in the Constitution, he says, the federal government has no business doing it. He even votes against laws that would give money to his constituents. Your district is subject to floods, but you vote against FEMA. Why? Because I think FEMA helps create the flood problems. You know, if it's risky on the Gulf Coast to build there, uh, the insurance prices will go up. Then you can either build there or pay high fees. But if it's, if it's too high, nobody will build there. Or they'll build there with full risk of flood comes or the wind blows your house away, you don't get reimbursed. So there might be modest uh, building in, in those areas. But if the government subsidizes the, the insurance and say, oh, if you build there, don't sweat it, uh, we're going to bail you out. So all of a sudden, more people move into the flood-prone areas. And then who are the people that have to bail you out? Somebody that lives out in the desert someplace. So it's unfair. It's not good economics. You create more problems, more houses get flooded, and it becomes a general problem rather than an individual problem. And what we have undermined there is the, um, is the principle of measuring risk. And then people do things that they wouldn't have otherwise done. Like move to the edge of the ocean. That is right. You also say no farm subsidies. None. No. I, I, first off, uh, I can't quite find it in the Constitution that said, you know, the farm subsidies program is authorized by Article 1, Section 8. It's, it's not there. But Economically, don't we need farm subsidies to make sure we have food? I think it uh, is totally unnecessary. I think we uh, might push the prices of food up and maybe makes it more difficult for poor people to, to buy food. Uh, because if there's a subsidy, it means the taxpayer was taxed to pay the subsidy to the so-called family farmer, which usually doesn't get the money. It usually goes to a huge corporate farmer. So the, the taxpayer pays one time. Then when you go to the store, you pay higher prices for your food. So it hasn't helped, helped the people. And why should we assume that the farmers wouldn't be productive? They're hardworking people. And... Uh, I never voted for farm subsidies, and I represented a farm district, and the they farmers voted you for, for me. that. They they voted for me, but the farm organizations don't. You know, medical organizations don't particularly send money to me either. The doctors will, the farmers will support me, uh, but not the organizations. When you have these organizations, whether farm organizations or medical organization, they seem to get too close to government, and they sort of wheel and deal with the government and. Uh, sort of justify their existence as lobbyists. And uh, they, I don't think they really truly represents the grassroots of these organizations. And most crops don't have subsidies. We have plenty of peaches and plums. That's right. Peas. And uh, sometimes when I go to the grocery store, I, I always marvel, isn't it wonderful how we can go and see much, so much fresh produce there? Uh, and the prices aren't regulated for these other things. It was a a, 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 a fallacious argument back in the 30s that the depression came from free markets and, and therefore we had to you, you know protect everybody and we had to have a safety net for everybody and we had a safety net for the farmers and we gave up on believing on, in freedom and understanding how the market works. You talk about freedom and tyranny. I seldom hear politicians use those words. That's right. I think those are our only two choices, and uh, we've had a grand experiment in this country where we emphasize freedom. If you read the Constitution, the Constitution was designed to protect individual liberty to restrain the government. But we have forgotten that. Now we have, a con we have an interpretation which means that we spy on the American people, encroach on their privacy, take care of them, run the nanny state, and then we have secrecy in government. So we have it now reversed. People say, well, they'll criticize me and say, oh, Ron, you want to you go back to the dark ages, you know, back to the dark ages of the strict interpretation of the Constitution. Well, I want to go back to the Constitution, but I don't consider it the dark ages. Uh, I think the, the dark ages uh, were uh, the days when all you had was tyranny. So freedom is new, tyranny is old, it's ancient. Well, here it is. This isn't the Dark Ages. This is the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. We don't need 55,000 pages of tax code alone in its explanations. This, this is enough. Everything isn't is in here. Fantastic, isn't it? Truth is simple. It is not complex. And uh, people ask me, how do I explain what I'm talking about? And I say, freedom is popular. 
And it, it is not complex. The more complex it is, the more leery we ought to be of what they're doing. You know, when they come across and they say, aha, we have to solve the problems of 9-11, we'll pass the Patriot Act. Well, that's complex. <laughs> you know, 400 pages and they dump it on us an hour before we vote. You can read the Constitution, you understand it, but you cannot read and understand hardly any of the legislation being passed. And win or lose, are you having a good time educating people about the Constitution? I think the most fun is, is probably the fact that there's a greater number of people than I ever dreamed that still remember the Constitution and they were waiting for somebody to speak in defense of the Constitution. But the other almost miraculous thing is happening, the young people are responding and they come in. And when I ask them, why do you join the, you know, the campaign, and I'll say, we love your position on the Constitution, we love your f position on freedom. These are young people who understand, it's not like they don't understand what they're inheriting. They know something about social security and they know something about intrusion of personal liberties and personal choices. That to me is a lot of fun. They want to be left alone. That is it. And that's what freedom is all about. Trusting that individuals can make better choices than government can make for us.